what he represents is patriarchy. We're here to do work as men, as patriarchs. There's nothing more natural than being a father. Welcome back to the 21 Convention, Second Patriarch Edition 2020 of Orlando, Florida, being held for the first time ever at the Big Badass 21 Summit. Our first speaker of the day here at 21, uh, 21 Con Patriarch Edition is going to be Coach Greg Adams, who spoke for his first time yesterday at the 21 Convention main event for men. This will be his second time returning to the 21 Convention stage. He was a women's basketball coach in college and high school for over 16 years, and a couple years ago on YouTube became a coach for men. He's been blown up. He has over 150,000 subscribers across all his channels. He has a bunch of them. The guy's like a media mogul here, media empire he's building. It's awesome. And I even hear Socrates better watch out. I hear he's runner-up uh, nominee for vice president of the Manosphere. So without further ado, please let me welcome back to the 21 convention stage, Coach Greg Adams. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. What's going on, gentlemen? Appreciate you being here. Yesterday, I did a little bit of intro about my background coaching. I'm not gonna do much of it, so if you missed it, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do it again, because I had to make time for the other stuff that I'm doing. But I'll give you a little bit of a, a background. I got coaching after a subpar basketball playing career, all right? As you can see, genetically, I wasn't blessed with a lot of height. A lot of people got tall, right? And a friend of mine said, hey, I'm looking for a JV girls basketball coach, all right? I said, I'll do it. From there, I started coaching high school AAU basketball. Then eventually that led me into college basketball coaching. I don't know how I got there, but I did, all right? Coached at five Division I universities. Then I was a head coach Division II. So I spent 16 years being a parent, father figure for women's basketball, okay? It was a great career. I got to travel the world, move coast to coast three times in moving vans. Eventually, got married, had two children. We'll talk about that. And the reason why I kind of got out of that and started a new thing, got into fitness training, was because I wanted to raise my kids, okay? I dealt with a lot of kids that weren't they didn't have father figures in their lives. They didn't have parents, okay? Either strong male figures. And they sought me out to be that, okay? So I raised a lot of kids from high school, middle school, all the way through college. And then I got the opportunity to be a father. Now, how many guys are in here fathers right now? Okay, you already have children. All right, the vast majority, how many, how many in here would like to have children? Okay, you don't have children now, you would like to have children. Okay, good. All right, so the, the conversation here is going to talk about the absence of male authority, okay? And this father figure idea that we have that maybe if you want children, this idea that you have in your head, we're gonna talk about what obstacles you face going into wanting to be a father, okay? Now, if you follow my content, I make content that is geared towards relationship dynamics between men and women. Being a guy that's been through a divorce and having to fight for my kids through, through the family court, okay, that's gonna be my experience. And we're gonna talk about how that has played a role in society. So for the people who said they were fathers, just so out of curiosity as I'm presenting this, how many of you still live with the mother of those children? Okay, so. I would say half of the fathers are divorced, co-parent or something, some similar arrangement to that, okay? That's gonna be important to what we're talking about, okay? Because if you listen to my YouTube channel, I tell people about the free agent lifestyle, which are, there's three tenets to the free agent lifestyle, and that is no cohabitation, no long-term relationships, and no marriage. Now, I advise guys of that because of the dangers that come with it. If they're not prepared to be a leader, an authority over their child, and they just wanna have a kid, we'll talk about that, they're not gonna be prepared for what the world has in store for them. You guys are seeing some of the social unrest that we have here. You guys are seeing it. The reason why we're seeing it, in my, opi in, in my opinion, is because there's an absence of male authority. 
So when people come to my channel and they see and hear what I'm talking about, and I say, you just went through a divorce, stay away from moving in with women. Stay away from long-term relationships. Don't marry again. The reason why I'm telling you that is because the deck is stacked against you already. The worst thing you can do in the first three years of your post-marriage, post-bad breakup, is to get back into that. Until you build value and authority, then you're, until you build that, you're not gonna be ready for what it takes to, if you're going inside of those three tenants. So people watch the channel, they're listening. They're not all red pill, hardcore. They're like, what is this guy talking about? I wanna find love. What if I wanna find, what if I wanna have kids, coach? That's what they ask me, what if I wanna have kids? And to me, it's the toughest question to ask, answer. What do I tell a guy? Okay, I just told you not to move in with a woman. I just told you not to get involved with them long term unless you have authority or are willing to lead. So instead of holding in my hands or with my mouth, my words, instead of holding their ability to procreate, the ability to pass on their lineage, their legacy, their ability to want to have the pleasures of having children, instead of doing that, what I tell them is, you need to do your due diligence in terms of what it takes to be a leader and an authority figure. You need to do your background information and in understanding what the powers that be might have in store for you, okay? As you guys know, I have two children of my own, okay? So I am a father, so it's hard for me as a father who love my children to tell another man, don't have kids, so I will never do that. I will just give you information that you need to process in order to really figure out if you really want to do this, okay? First of all, you're going to need to be able to have the authority. Be willing to lead, okay? See, the desire to have children is not enough. It's not enough. You're going to want to have to lead and be a responsible person for them. There's going to be some things in place for you to knock you off of being a parent. I call it the removal of the children, okay? If you've been watching anything going on in this society right now, this removal of the children is very intentional. If you're looking at the kids now, it's very intentional. It was designed to subvert the authority of men, remove them from the household. It was designed to pervert society. This is where we're going with this particular presentation, okay? And you as one man is not enough. Your desire to have one child, two, three, it's not enough. These things are in place intentionally to divide not only the family, but to divide everyone else. If they have access to the child, they must remove the man. And if you're easily removed, then they have access to the child. Once they have access to the child, then they have access to the rest of society, and they do right now. We're gonna talk about how they do. And we're gonna talk about why it's important for you to claim that authority amongst all costs. Now, some people may view my content and say, man, this guy's a Debbie Downer. <laughs> I'm more of a realist. I basically just call it how I see it. You can take it or leave it. You can take 10% of what I say. You can take 50, you can run with it and take 100, okay? But I just kick it real. I'm just telling you how it is. I don't live what I call the hope strategy. I don't prescribe to it. I don't lead you guys into hope. I don't wish. I don't pray upon the lucky star. I don't play to, pray to God. I don't do any of that. I see what I see, and I devise a plan to see if I can be, uh, work against it. So for you guys, let me give you some positives so you can say, at least he talked positive about being a dad, okay? The positives are the majority of kids are still raised in two-parent households the majority, but it, that number goes down every year, every year. Okay, right now we're hovering around 60%. Okay, for the most part, another positive real quick is that a lot of these two-parent households leads kids, they have a better chance into being productive citizens, two-parent household. So if we can keep the vast majority of people raised in this condition, condition it'll be great. Unfortunately, Fortunately, let's go back to some negatives. The media has told the two-parent household raised kids that they have what they call privilege. Oh, you got white privilege. 
You were raised in a two-parent household, lucky you, okay? Well, it wasn't designed for the rest of these people to live in a two-parent household, okay? They already had influenced them to live in a single-parent household. But now they continue to demonize it and saying two-parent households are privileged. How likely are those people to want to do that when they grow up? Remember I said they're designed to pervert the society. Let's take a look at something real quick, okay? We have what we call going on right now, beta male energy. Beta male energy right now going on in society. We're seeing it. Now look at these numbers right here. They have what we also call single mothers are heroes. Look at this, 1950, these are percentage of births that are to unwed women. We think single motherhood has been around for a long time. It really hasn't. This is a new concept and they use marketing campaigns to get you to accept it. 1950s, 5%. Not a lot of children born to unwed mothers. We get to 2012, we're almost dang near half. Okay, some communities, some communities, 70% of the children born to unwed mothers. What typically happens right now, the father absence is a crisis in America. 19 million children, more than, more than, well, we're approaching half at this particular point. This is in 2017, live without a father in the home, okay? And I'm telling you this for a reason, because the guys that want to be fathers, the four or five of you that raise your hands, probably half of you will not even raise your kid from zero to 18. You won't even have the authority to do so. The systems are already in place. They got a whole bunch of things in place for you to not be in that home. Your job is to maintain that authority. Remember I said, oh, being a father is not enough or wanting to be a father is not enough. You have to have the authority. You have to be willing to lead, okay? So what does that lead to? Kids that grow up without a father, four times as much to be raised in poverty, Seven, time, seven times likely to be a teenage pregnancy victim. More likely to experience child abuse, that's normally because potentially the single mother, the co-parent has moved in another man into your domicile, into her domicile, okay? Behavioral problems, who in here was raised with, by two parents? Okay, two, wow, look at this, okay, that represents, remember that graph I showed you? That represents that, okay? What about this, incarceration? They talk about mass incarceration. More likely to go to prison. The stat that I put in my second book, The Evolution, 73% of the prison inmates were raised in single parent households, primarily single mothers, okay? Child obesity, are we seeing this today? Are we not seeing this, okay? Two times it's likely to suffer from obesity. Why? Video games, social media, we're gonna get to that. Crime, more likely to be a criminal. Somebody said one time in the 80s, oh, the numbers of uh, the, the crime rate is going down, okay? While single parenthood was going up, they wanted an explanation, well, why is that happening? Okay, it's happening because they're all in jail, <laughs> right? Can't be out there committing crime when you're already locked up. Education two times more likely to drop out. See this? Beta male energy right here. This is beta male energy, okay? And the media can get to your kids to incite you to do anything when you don't have an authority figure around. They can incite you into this division. Now you see me, I'm black, but this right here ain't it. This ain't it. This is right here being a victim. Now if you have a father that's leading you, you're not gonna be a victim. If you got a father that's leading you, you're not gonna say, yeah, let's go outside, son. If you grew up with a father, you're not gonna be out there thinking that this is gonna make a difference. See, I teach my kids they're not victims. You make your own way. You design your own path. You don't go out there and yell and scream in the streets to try to force people to give you something. This is beta male energy. And I called it out. I'm not afraid to call this out on social media. Okay, I called it out from day one that this ain't it. Okay, what about this stuff? Anybody hear this? It's a movie called Cuties in which 
These girls represent 11-year-old girls, okay? And they're in provocative poses designed to, well, the producer of the movie and the director, oh, this is a coming-of-age film about girls developing and, and realizing their sexuality and their power. Really? Is that what you're calling it? Because this looks like none of them had a dad. This looks like all of their mothers dragged them down to the audition and said, this is the only way to do it. Let's sell that peace leave. If you've been listening to my content, you know what that is. Let's sell it because that's all we got, girls. See, if these women have fathers, these young girls have fathers, you're not going to let your daughters go out there and do any of this. Okay? Even if you are in a marriage, okay, even if you're in a marriage, a lot of men right now, you're in hand-pecked relationships meaning she's the authority figure in the house. You can't even say anything about raising the kids because she believes she owns the kids. We're gonna talk about that. So being married and being, having the kids in a two-parent household still is not a guarantee if you do not keep the authority. So let's go to my background a little bit. I have two kids, love them to death, 14. My daughter's the age 14. She right now is developing her personality. Boy, is she ever, all right? She is now engaged in the world, okay? My 13-year-old son, they're separated by 16 months, so they will have that you know, year. They're born close together, okay? He is more like me. The daughter's more like the mom. I'm not saying anything negative. Um, both of them, black belts in Taekwondo. I got them really active, my son following my footsteps and my mother, we both play basketball, so he wants to be a basketball player. My daughter wants nothing to do with that. She went from soccer to U.S. Junior National Tennis, and then now she's a cheerleader, okay? So I was very influential in their life, solid students, love being a parent, so this is why it's difficult for me to advise you to not be a parent, but I want to tell you what you have ahead of you, okay? But I have what they call a co-parenting agreement. Anybody a co-parent in here? Okay, we got a lot of co-parents. I could go on and on about my opinion about co-parenting, okay? That's another topic, all right? I'm not a big fan of co-parenting. Two kids, two authority figures living in two separate households, split in time. I think that was probably trying to make a deal with the devil at this particular point. It's not that beneficial. I don't think they turn out any more better than single parent raised households. That's just my opinion, okay? But in order to get that deal, I had to fight for that. This is where you need to know, I wanna be a dad. Well, this is probably what you're gonna have to do. I had to fight for that through the courts, spend tens of thousands of dollars to get a 50% custody arrangement in which I see my kids half of their childhood, not a second more. She doesn't give me a second more. Now, that's what it was the first seven years. Since I started doing YouTube, she said, uh-oh, I better make sure I let this guy do something. I'm tired of him calling me out, okay? <laughs> she made three attempts to get full custody after the initial judgment of 50-50. Over seven years, she went back to court. I want the kids. She went back to court. I want the kids. Went back to court. I want the kids. What did that make me do? More lawyer fees more lawyer fees, more time. Remember, we got 50% approaching single motherhood. Showed you the graph. We got 70% in the black community. You know how much this is going on every day? Have you ever been to a family courthouse? Anybody raise your hand? You ever been to a family courthouse? This is going on in tens, I mean, across the country, everywhere. 10, 20 cases per judge, six courtrooms. And they're fighting for these children. They're fighting for the authority, okay? So for me, a lot of people would say, look, just give them up, pay your child support, let them be raised by the mother. Save yourself the money, don't fight. To me, I said, I can't do that. I've seen too many strippers, rappers, kids that ain't got molested, uh, basketball players, all saying, well, if it wasn't for my father not wanting to be there, I would have been this or my father was never there, okay? So I, I didn't want to be that guy. I automatically knew that that wasn't going to be me, okay? But for me, okay, I didn't want to explain to a broken child about the system. They don't want to hear that. 
I didn't want to explain to them that the women have an advantage in the courthouse. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to tell them, oh, well, you know, the system is designed to get the male authority figure out. You think kids want to hear that? They don't care. They're like, where were you, dad? So I had to fight, pay $60,000 to see my kids half of the time of their life, okay? And I found other ways to see them. This is what I'm trying to advise you to do. So if you're in a situation, this is what you have to do, okay? If you can afford the time and if you can afford the expense. These are possibilities for you. She wouldn't let me see them, so what did I do? I volunteered at the kids' school on the days she had custody. I said, I'm gonna go volunteer at their school, right in the classroom. Teacher, what do you need? You need a math assistant that day? I'm gonna be there. And I would go in there, sit at the kids' tables. The kids loved me. They were like, oh, how you doing, Mr. Adams? They loved me, all the kids. And the teacher saw me. So when she went in there being a spin doctor, oh, this, that, that, this, that, that. They're like, well, he's, he's in my classroom all the time, okay? I coached all of their sports. I signed them up, you're gonna play basketball. She, she balled. The mom was like, no. I was like, they're going to play basketball. Tell, tell your son he's not playing basketball. So we play basketball. Who was the coach? Me. My daughter played soccer. Who was the coach? I didn't know nothing about soccer. Nothing. I'm doing soccer drills. I play ball with my hands. I don't know nothing about soccer. But I learned I was the coach. Three years straight. Five teams. Spring, summer, spring season, fall season. I'm coaching them up. She's on the sideline telling the moms how bad of a dad I am. They're going, hmm, girls seem to like them. I got on the PTA board. I was on the PTA board. I ran a fundraiser for the kids' school. You know she called the police twice on me for having access to my kids on the days, her custodial day. My daughter's at a tennis tournament. She called the police, it wasn't my custodial day. She brought the, my daughter to tennis. I'm talking to my son. You can't do that. It's not your custody day. Call the police. I recorded it, put it on YouTube. She took me to court. The judge threw the case out. He can do whatever he wants. He has freedom of speech, okay? Plot twist. Unfortunately, she fell ill, had to get a medical transplant. I can't give out too much advice. I mean, information on that, HIPAA laws. But I got full custody during that time for a year until she recovered. She came back to get 50% custody. The judge said no. Eventually, she got back to full health and all of that to be able to get back to resuming to our co-parenting. Co but listen, I tell you all of that as a backstory to make you understand that you want to be a dad, you better anticipate that that is a possibility. Why? You don't have authority over that woman. She can do whatever she wants, whenever she wants. There's judges, lawyers, mediators, social workers, counselors, child support officers, child protective services. All of these exist for the moment she says, you know what? I don't want this man in my house anymore. By virtue of that, I can get the benefits from him being here, AKA financially, but I'm gonna remove his authority. Now, when I tell you all of those things are in place, they're designed for this very thing, the absence and the removal of male authority, okay? So what must you do, okay? What must you do? You must select who you procreate with very carefully. I wanna have kids, select them carefully. Now. The process of procreation does not require great judgment. You get real dumb real fast, okay? You don't intend to procreate with people when you do. You're just practicing, okay? However, that practice becomes reality when you let one slip past the goalie. And now, that is your co-parent. If you haven't married this woman, the likelihood of you getting co-parenting rights dang near zip. Good luck. If you were married to her, you got a little bit more of a power position, which fortunately I was married to the, uh, my children's mother. Then you have a little bit of negotiation in terms with the judges, okay? But today's young men 
they're missing out on their fathers, okay? You look at today's young men and women, you try to find out what's missing. If a kid is born after 2010, essentially, they were born with what we call a smartphone in their hand. They know no other life. They're used to being able to access information from that smartphone. If you've ever been around kids, and I've been around a lot of them ever since, when did I start coaching? 1998. 19, yeah, probably, yeah, 98, 96. Okay. Kids will look like this now. Okay. That's what they do. Their whole world is right here. See, I was born, you're born anywhere in the 1970s, 1980s, maybe 1960s, some of you guys. You don't know nothing about a smartphone. You live life without one. Your world is outside of that. Kids today, their world, their authority, everything they look up to is right there, plus video games and all of that stuff. Okay. For some of them, the drive, the ambition is no longer there. You were born in the 1970s. Remember you wished you had a video phone like the guy on the Jetsons? You remember that. They was like, damn, they got a video phone. They got them now. They can have, comp they, we living in the Jetsons world. So with that comes a lack of drive because everything's right in front of their face. They can get to it. They're running around with a thousand dollar phone in their hand. You guys couldn't even get shoes from Payless. You had to beg your mother. Now they have that. So they're given everything. And a lot of their examples, unfortunately in America, most kids want to be not doctors, not engineers, not lawyers. They want to be content creators. They want to be YouTubers because they see YouTubers getting rich. They worship women. Worship of women comes from social media. Do you realize a kid has seen more naked flesh before the age of 13 than your grandmother, grandfather, granddaddy, great-grandpappy ever would have wished he would have seen. Your kid has already seen that. And if you're not managing it or willing to manage it, guess what? You're not ready to be a dad. You're not. If you're not willing to take that phone away from them, if you're not willing to go on their social media sites, let me see who you're following. Let me see who's following you. Not ready. And a lot of people aren't, okay? You see the tight jeans, tight jeans wearing guys? Remember that beta male behavior? Everybody walking around with tight jeans, tight clothes, okay? Subservient behavior, especially from boys towards girls. The whole women empowerment, they can't talk to any, they're scared of girls now. You can't even say anything negative to a girl. You're gonna be considered what? Toxically masculine. Anybody heard of the app TikTok? I call it TikTok on my channel. Okay. You got that going on. You got um, obviously emotional behavior and responses to things. Emotional responses are what? Beta energy, feminine energy. Boys crying. Boy, you can cry. That's what the mother would tell him. The father would be like, let me see something, son. Let me tell you something. You need to wipe them tears up real quick. You need to learn how to respond to things without using emotion all the time. This is what a father probably would tell a kid. The mom would tell them just to fall out and cry, okay? They make excuses for failures in their life. Make excuses for failure. Kids got an excuse for everything. Don't be born black, short. You got one leg longer than the other, all right? You can get out of anything. You can get extra time for tests. You can claim, my kids are half black and half white. They can claim they half racist, people half racist to them. It don't matter. There's an excuse for everything. This right here is on purpose. The society was designed to provide kids with excuses in order to divide, to divide them, okay? Anybody got teenagers? How many of them leave the house? They wake up, go get some breakfast, go right back in their room, video games all day, social media, little online porn. They're satisfied. They don't got no reason to go out. So listen. Here's the deal. We turn over our kids to people who don't have our best interests. Now, this is kind of the meat of what's going on. This is what's going to tell you, you, I want to be a dad, or you're trying to be a better dad. What you got coming for you right now, okay? What you, as the authority figure, once you release that, once you put yourself in a situation, divorce, co-parenting, you knock a girl up, 
Okay, you're a weak leader in your house, no authority. You let the system remove the kids from you, you, you don't fight. If your mother, the mother of the kid, has authority over them, she's gonna turn them over, see something here, to social media, video games, okay? Tick, thought, snapper, chat, Instagram, fake book, okay? A lot of these things are distractions. The kid cannot release themselves from these apps. They can't. They're designed that way. They're direct marketing machines for socialism and communism. You don't see what they're seeing unless you check. Now, they'll have conversations with you and you'll pick it up. And you'll be like, ooh, where'd you hear that? Well, you know where you heard it from. They heard them from these things, okay? On TikTok, there's daughters, your daughters closes her, do uh, her, bedroom, her bedroom door, starts twerking, grinding, and she's doing this for her friends, her girlfriends. She posted, it. oh, isn't it cute, isn't this funny? There's grown men watching your daughter do this. Seductive dances, you go on this thing, man, and they're doing it, girls everywhere. It's a smorgasbord for pedophiles. Okay, she doesn't have any idea about child predators. You can tell her all you want. Are you gonna give her access to this? Are you gonna deny her the ability to post? Are you gonna control the post? If you're not willing to do that, I'm gonna tell you, you're not willing to be the authority figure she needs. Okay, one slip up, she posts her address, she tells everybody where she lives, she puts the shirt of her school, Okay, she does a dance. Everybody knows where this kid goes to school. She's a target, okay? This is what social media is doing, okay? So the social Marxist movement, they're dominating the feed. Your friend follows a recording artist. Oh, this is my favorite artist. You better do some research on that artist. You're like, who is that? See, when I was growing up, we had the gangster rap coming in. Too Short, we had Tupac later, N.W.A. My mother caught me with a two short tape, made me take it right back to the store. <laughs> I was raised by a single mother, corporate America working woman. Somebody at her hair, one of her hairdressers said, if your kid comes up with this two short tape, kill it, all right? Guess what I came up with? She said, where'd you spend that $10 I gave you? Oh, I bought some music, what'd you buy? Too short, I was like, she ain't gonna know. She said, oh, you got bought two short tape? Take it back to the store. And this was before the parental advisory explicit lyrics stamp was on there. Now, what about your son? We talked about your daughter. What about your son? He's seeing a lot of naked girls on there. It's basically going to kill his drive to go get a piece of peace leave himself. Why? He got it right here. All he needs is some napkins, some lotion. He good. I'll jump right back on the video games. And then you said, what, son, why don't you want to be anything? He already got it right here in his phone. Now, what about what he's seeing from his female counterparts? We talk about sexual marketplace value. I don't have time to really talk about it. But kids at a certain age group, young girls develop, they're going to get a lot of attention. Young boys are simply not. That's just the reality of the situation. He's going to witness his female counterparts on TikTok, 10,000 followers, 20,000, 30,000, million followers. How, what does that do to the dynamics and the hierarchy on campus. Can he get this girl now? He has no chance and he's gonna grow up with them through high school believing I have no chance at women, okay? This is what's happening with the garnering of attention. The self-esteem of this kid is going to get killed. The only thing he can reach out now to are Instagram thoughts and pornography and video games. This is our culture. What's the next thing? Teachers, teachers, remember your teacher used to come to school, she had a big old nice uh, modestly dressed, uh, big old dress on, hi students. Anybody hear what these teachers are doing now? They're doing monkey double backflips all over their students. Crazy amount of what's happening. A lot of them, this is a teacher by the way, this popular meme is a liberal professor. She's a teacher, okay? 
Do you realize when you send your kid to the public school indoctrination camp, that's what I call it, 93% of their primary school teachers are female. 93%. From kindergarten to sixth grade, 93%. You're the male authority figure. God forbid you don't have to go through a custody battle. You're remaining with your wife. But you send them to school, 93% of the people that they're going to get in contact to encounter are women. Today's modern teacher are young women, like this. They've been trained in the public school indoctrination camp themselves about how to make kids the victim. They're not teaching arithmetic, they're, vi they're teaching victim studies. Your kid comes back fired up. Oh, my teacher says she don't like Trump. I'm like, why is she talking to you about Trump? How did that conversation come up with your fifth grade teacher? Has no place in the school, but that's what they're doing. When they get to high school, the chances get a little bit better. 76% of the teachers that they're going to be around are female, 76%. More women exposed to women, more ex women exposed to socialism, Marxism, so you have less of a chance. By the time they get to college, 31% of the college professors are female. So. Let's focus on academic studies. If you look at the test results of kids, they're not performing very well. We don't, there's no emphasis in that. There's really no need for it anymore. You can make money without a college education for the most part. But in regards to the socialism that is going on in these universities, the gaslighting of the kids, talking about issues related to social justice, which is social division, it's prominent. How many men are in here fighting for these kids? You've been at work all day. Your kids been on that screen way more than they seen you. I wanna have children, coach. I'm just telling you what you about to uh, come against, okay? You gotta be willing to be able to be the dominant over all of these things. If you're not, I'm gonna just say good luck. Good luck. Not only that, your co-parent selection skills, your mate selection skills are gonna have to be perfect. In the in this, what do they call it, coronavirus? This, this, this coronavirus, the teachers in Los Angeles Unified School District, their union decided when they said it was safe to open the schools, they said, well, as a union, we don't want to return to school until you meet our demands. You think they would have said, we would like more fathers to be present, we would like the kids to have better exposure to books, you think they would have said, we want kids to be able to have a great learning environment when they leave this? You know what they said they wanted as a list of demands? We want to defund the police. We want increased taxes on the wealthy. We want implementation of Medicare for all. This is what they're focused on. They're not focused on your kid. They're focused on indoctrinating your kid. Where's your authority going to come in there? Some teachers said we should just get rid of history altogether. Guys, if you know anything about history, all right, the people who lack knowledge of history are normally doomed to repeat it. They are covering up their misdeeds. They're hiding things. This is what you have to deal with in the school. So again, I volunteered at my kid's school to be able to see them more. I saw nothing but women, the new name was the women. The, the lunch ladies, women. Teacher's assistants, women. PTA board member, all of them were women except for me. Special ed, et cetera, et cetera. So, you think you're just gonna go to work and leave your kid at the public school indoctrination camp and all is well? No, they're creating more division in order to subvert your authority. You have to be able to counteract that. Who's the next person you're gonna leave them over to? Oh, there she is, mom. Who grew up with a mother that was a stay-at-home mom? Okay, look at that. That's more than I would have thought. That's more than I would have thought. Okay, see the myth of single motherhood has been exposed. I gave you the statistics already. Kids are failing in that dynamic. It is a recipe for disaster. It is exactly white. It is exactly privilege if you have the opposite of a single motherhood household. Okay, so today's woman is told. Get your career, go to work. 
I'm not against that. Go ahead and do so. Oh, you're going to be a super mom too? That ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to make a choice. 72% of women today work either full-time or part-time outside of the home. 72%. In the 1980s, it was 50%. Okay, so those guys that raised their hand, they look like they were, you guys grew up in the 80s, okay? So they have a special place for her to drop off the kids because you work and she works. The public school indoctrination camp. If you get a divorce, they'll do it for free, daycare. Oh, we'll give you a program. You never meet the teachers, you never meet these people that are dealing with your kids. As a result, what typically happens is these kids are taught more on how to be an unwed mother. We already talked about the statistics. In order to do that, she'll pass the kid through a network of babysitters, elderly relatives. If you're in a single parent household, free programs to drop off the kids. Many times she uses these as a network to prevent you from getting custody. She doesn't even have custody of the kid and she's fighting you for custody. You go, what is going on here? This is because, remember I told you about the lawyers, all of these people, the mediators, counselors, they, these things are in place to remove your authority. A working mom, in my opinion, cannot raise the kid properly if her only option is to pass them through the public school indoctrination camp. There's no way. There's no way. Do we see the results of this now? Look, the evidence supports my argument now. The people who don't want me to say this, oh, well, that's not necessarily true. And then they enter into evidence the one obscure case of where it worked. Oh, look, look at this kid. He's okay. Well, I'm looking at, remember I worked at schools and volunteer, I'm looking at everybody. Everybody's a sample case. And I'm looking at it, it's not working. So when you select your mate, are you selecting a woman that has more degrees than a thermometer? Waving her degree around, I'm a single, strong, independent woman, and you knock her up? Well, you have a publicly school indoctrination camp raised kid. Son husbands, Product products of the single mother raised kid. That's basketball player kissing his mother. I have a mother. I don't kiss her like that. <laughs> Not as an adult. But the son husband is a direct effect of the removal of the masculine man who she could not maintain or chose to turn over his authority to sell you out for nickels and dimes in support and turn them over to the public school, okay? The son husband essentially is the, he basically is the masculinity, he's the masculine presence that is used in place, he's the masculine presence that is used in place of the absent male in a single mother's life. That community, in particularly 70% or better, I believe he's from Washington, D.C., go look up the stats. He basically is going to assume the duties of the father who was removed or poorly selected by her. And he's going to give her all of that masculine energy up until a point. I won't say what else is going on. But what she's going to do, she's going to keep him close as she would a husband. She's gonna guilt him into supporting her because she highly likely is never gonna get married ever again. She knows that, she hopes, she's on Tinder trying to date me or date somebody who has beta male energy to be the father who stepped up, all right? Not the stepfather, but she's gonna guilt him into being that lifelong support as a husband would be. She's basically going to sabotage any connections that man will have at selecting his mate. She'll sabotage it because she knows that is her means of support going forward. If she has a daughter, that daughter is going to be seen as competition to her. So if that daughter remains in the household long enough, 
What's going to happen is that daughter's going to be the younger version of her. She's got to remove that daughter in order to find her a man. So she'll feed that daughter to the lions out there, Pookie, Ray Ray, Chad, Tyrone, Dexter, Derek, whoever it is, she'll release them to the hounds and she'll be a victim. Teenage pregnancy, pregnancy at a young age, and then guess what? The cycle repeats. We're gonna keep this wheel going. Who benefits? Not you as the man, not the male authority. Who else benefits? The government. Because now we got future prisoners. We got public school indoctrinated kids. Okay? We got a whole dang thing that can feed this line, this beast that we call United States. Church, the pastor. All right? We turn over all of our authority to give nickels and dimes to this man. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of men running the church. The church is a rest haven for progressive thought and ideology. The church is no longer, okay? But there's still people that have faith and believe, they have spirituality, they have religion. No big deal, you'll still be able to go there, but you'll see a lot of, a lot of things that you don't wanna see there. A lot of trans ideology, a lot of homosexuality, people masquerading as choir directors with more feminine energy than you see in even the women. They will volunteer themselves to raise your kids in the nursery program. You don't even know. You're listening to the pastor and they and they're twerking for the kids. Okay? The progressive ideology has infected and infested the church and the pastor doesn't want to fumble the bag. All right, I'm not going to give this up. I'm not going to assume authority even in my own church. I need this money. What's happening? Money becomes the priority. So instead of leaving a man, all right, or instead of leading men with the message that can help empower their community, empower their church, the church is led by women, now female pastors, okay? Which that is against the biblical uh, principles, right? That's against the Bible. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not a very big Bible scholar, but I grew up in the black church. They try to hook me up with all the hood rats, the single mothers, and try to save their life. And I say, hell no. <laughs> I don't want her. But that's against biblical principles. But progressive ideology has told them, ah, eh, let's just let it happen. What's the worst that can happen? Those are some words to die by. What's the worst that can happen? Oh, they just want to get married. What's the worst that can happen? What do we see now? Little boys got TikTok, Instagram channels, putting makeup on themselves. You remove the authority of the man, you feed him to the lions. It, so you guys, I want to be a dad. This is what you should think about because it is happening live in front of our face. You got to be the authority and it's going to take fighting every day, paying attention. We turn our kids over to coaches. Some things are good. This is a good thing. I was a coach. I took care of a lot of kids. I was with them through a lot of their first experiences with things. They came back and, and talked to me. Some kids, this might be the very first male authority figure that they've ever seen. The only way they see them is they show some sort of signs that they can be talented in sports. If they're not talented in sports, they miss this person altogether. So this man basically volunteers. He may be a self-employed guy, blue collar worker. He may be a dad himself. He may be a guy that just loves sports and be passionate about them, but he's gonna give your son or daughter their first lessons in being responsible. He may push them. But let me tell you something. I started coaching in 1996, 1998, something like that. And coaching from there to when I left in 2012 was completely different. The kids were different. Everything was different. What I could say to a kid was different. Oh, she got an eating disorder. Don't say you got to be. Oh, don't tell them to run through the wall. Tell this one to run through the wall. Oh, be conscious about this. Oh, this one has special needs. Jeez Louise. I'm just trying to get my kids to perform. But now I got to be a counselor in this one. This is what the responsibilities are. This person is essentially the savior in many communities. This is the only port of masculinity 
left. And I'm going to tell you, it's not very much left. Okay. By the time they reach coach, it might be way too late. Some of your biggest sports heroes right now were products of single mothers and a coach saved that kid. A coach saved that kid from being on the 7-Eleven all-star team. LeBron James, Kevin Durant. They had to go get these kids out of the house. No, he needs to be at this tournament. We're going to pay for that kid to fly all over the damn country to be seen by prospect, be seen by scouts. Okay? Zion Williamson, same thing. Mother was single mom. She met a man. She married him. That was the basketball coach. He was the basketball coach. Now he was the number one pick in the draft a few years ago. Both of these men, Kevin Durant, Zion Williamson, got on TV when they had their best moments in life. Kevin Durant wins the MVP. Zion Williamson, first pick in the draft. These men built like the most alpha men you would ever see in your life. They got on TV and cried like babies about their mama. My mama's the real MVP. Really, she's mate selected very good. You've never seen your father. You were dragged out of the, the house to be an all-star. Your mama's the real EP, MVP? Oh, she sacrificed. She got up early to take me to practice. That's what a mama does. That's what they do. Now, if she had a dad there, guess what? Probably would have been a little bit better. She didn't have to sacrifice. Zion Wilson got on TV. Stepfather dragged him all over the damn country to play. Coached his teams, et cetera, et cetera. He cries about his mama. And I'm looking at this going, is this what we're really going to teach everybody? <laughs> Listen, I'm not big on women's worship because it's by design. We worship women every day of our lives. They have marketing campaigns to worship women. Hashtag believe all women. Hashtag me too. Hashtag women create life. I'm like, are we, did I miss science class? Did you miss science class? I think two people created that life. She was the incubator. She passed it between her legs or her stomach. Thank goodness she did that. You probably wouldn't have been here. However, she did her role, I did mine. Mother's Day, we make a big old celebration. Father's Day, here's your tie. Enjoy the football game. See, the last bastion of hope right here is you. See, you're the, that, that's you. You're the protector. You're the authority figure. They've, done, they've put all of these people in place to subvert your authority. By the time your kid gets home from all of these people, and all of these vehicles of influence, there you are. Now what are you going to do? Okay, I want to be a dad. Time to be a dad. You got to follow up and see what your kid just went through all damn day. <laughs> That's if you care. That's if you can focus on that. How many people got time for that? You got time for that? You better make time for it. You better make a whole bunch of time. Because if you don't follow up with this kid on a routine basis, the influence will not be you, okay? Now, our fathers and mothers, sometimes we forget how young they were when they had us. When I see my kids, I'm like, okay, my kids are 14. You know, I had my kids around 28, something like that. My mother had me when, when she was 20. Now, when I think about that, I'm like, dang, like, wow, these people were really young when they had us. But they didn't have the things that we had in place to supersede their authority. So as a father, guys, I just want to make, let you know, you're facing uphill battle. Many of you guys will be displaced, displaced from the home, unfortunately. And even if you're displaced from the home, you got to be the authority. You have to find a way. Divorce rates are approaching 60%. Single motherhood rate in the black community approaching 80% in some areas. In the white communities, we're talking about it's approaching 50%. Most of them, your kids are going to be split up in these so-called co-parenting uh, arrangements. Since I have a little time, I'll talk about co-parenting real quick. 
There's two castles. There's two set of rules. How in the world are you going to be able to manage what that person does with your children? It is impossible, unless, unless you're one of the few core parenting situations where you have a good relationship. I was talking to a brother that was here earlier, and he seems to have that or on his way to have that. And we we're like, that's not the norm. So good for you to have that. But I've seen co-parenting situations where the kid comes over. This was a teenage daughter of a neighbor that I knew. When the daughter was at this, the mom's house, the boyfriend would come in and spend the night. This daughter's 17. Is that happening at the dad's house? Hell no. <laughs> but it's happening at the mom's house. And legally, he has no say in that. How good is co-parenting working? Ain't gonna be too good, okay? Because the dad has no more authority over that child. So that is the problem with co-parenting. Even if you get along, there's two castles and the kid can do what we call parent shopping, okay? I'm gonna ask this per per parent first. If she says no, I'm gonna ask the dad and I'm gonna go back and forth till I get what I need from one of them and I'm gonna use both of them, pit them against each other to get what I want. Kids are very crafty. So these are why I don't agree with it. What's the solution? Well, damn. Some societies just leave the kid with the dad. Why? The dad's gonna look after the kid better. How do I know that? Look at United States of America. How we doing with the kids being with the mom? So, Another uphill battle, you'll be disenfranchised through the workplace. I hope you guys are doing well in your employment. But there's more women coming in. There's more competition. They can lower the wages. It's going to be harder for you to keep up in this world right now. Especially right now, they're, they're ruining your businesses. It's going to be tough for you to keep this up. Okay. If you have a bad situation, you might face disrespect from the mom, the mom of the, the child. <clears throat> and you'll get trampled over in the courts, okay? If you're not willing to, sp willing to spend, okay, all my dads to be, I wanna, I wanna have kids, you're gonna have to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 just fighting, fighting for your kid if, if she happens to go rogue on you. I have a thing called the marriage will in my book. She'll probably go rogue on you. We call it the bait and switch, in which once you're fully invested, once she's got what she wants, she got the house, the car, the kids, she don't have to be anything to you. You're worth more divorced than married. She can still get the benefits from you and remove you and then live independently. And the government and the states, they will prop her up and give her a false sense of security. Here's a job. Here's a little bit of support. Here's a program for this. We'll have you get some free daycare. Guys, the days of where they could their only choice was to stay with you, they're gone now, okay? And a lot of people have this fantasy of being with kids and being with a family. That's almost a thing of the past for the most part. If you live in a major city, that's gone. You live in Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Washington, D.C., or something like that, it's gone. If you live in, like Orlando, might, we're here, might have 200,000 people, a little bit more possible, okay? Because you don't have that corporate element dragging and trying to get them out of the house, all right? It's still here, but not, okay? So you might hear me talk about women a lot. I don't blame the women for this, okay? I don't. Like anyone, children, men, they will take advantage of the situation, okay? They will take it, they're just taking advantage of what's presented in front of them. You'll do the same thing. If it was you that was gonna benefit, unfortunately, you're not the beneficiary in this. Okay, so you'll watch your children be taken from you and have to come up with the solution or you'll have to try to maintain that authority. It is important that you do not abdicate your position of authority and allow women to continue to lead. They're not born to lead. Biblically, they tell you that. They're meant to be an addition and a support to your life. Some people are uncomfortable with men who say that. Oh, we hate women. No, that's progressive women we talking about. I don't hate women. I hate them progressive women. 
because they have bitten from the apple of feminism. Okay? And your young boy and your young girl's life are at stake. Okay? Now, for the irresponsible fathers, I do have to say, hey, man, that's messed up that you did that to your kid. Most of the time, it's not the kid that they're trying to be away from. It's the woman that they chose to bust a nut in. Okay? That woman becomes problematic. It's easy to leave her. So you guys, again, with mate selection, you have to really be careful about what's going on here. So look, solution-wise, again, be conscious about the mate that you select if you want to have authority in your life. If you have kids now, try to get back into your position of authority with that kid. Be involved with all of those things that we talked about because all of those things, all of those people, social media teachers, all of that stuff, they will see your kids way more than you see them, especially when they get to middle school. They'll have seven teachers now. Five or six of them will be women, all right? Then they'll have a coach. Then they'll have their phone. By the time you come in, hey, dad, all right? Are you going to say, hey, 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 Johnny, get back here. How's your day? Worst question you can ask a kid. <laughs> Damn. Fine. Good. Yep. Hey, Johnny, where's your phone? Let's go through and see what you've been looking at all day. That conversation's going to get real. Eyes going to start bugging out. I did that to my daughter once. Her, she jumped out of her skin. Wasn't ready. You should be doing this to your wives, too. Your wife should be doing it to you. Okay? Because if, if that's what you're going to do, everybody's, oh, we need a little bit of privacy. Oh, yo, yo, you need privacy? Oh, okay. You don't need no marriage then. You damn near don't need no kids. Kids want to go and close the door. Bam. Oh, no, we got closed door hours here. Your door can be closed between these hours and these hours. The rest of the time, open them damn doors up. So when I walk by, I can see what the hell you're doing. Those complete computer screens, all right, I want to be able to see it walking past the door. I don't want to have to walk clean into the room, turn around, and hear you click, click, clicking off that damn app or whatever you're doing when I roll up or they hear you coming up the stairs or right down the hallway. If you have a chance, get involved, stay involved. If we don't do this, I'm telling you, if we continue to go in the direction we're going, kids have no chance. You dads need to stay involved. The future dads, I know I just chased a lot of you guys away from being dads, but it is now more important than ever that if you choose to be a father, you have the mindset to be an authoritative father. Doesn't mean you have to control everything, but you have to be the position, because I had the father last right there, right? The father should have been first. Everything should be influenced from there, okay? So for me, YouTube is where you can find me. Okay, I have a YouTube channel here. That's what it looks like. The return of masculinity. Okay, masculinity for me is not how you look, how strong you are, how many bench press reps you can do, how many girls you can get. It's about being valuable and having authority. These are two books that I wrote. They had some in the hall. Okay, I couldn't haul it all the way from California, everything, but the free agent lifestyle is really geared towards men who maybe you went through a bad breakup, you're trying to recover. You went through a divorce, you're trying to recover. You're single, and you're trying to find your way in a society where there's no more women willing to present value to you, and they're presenting entitlement to you. How do you adapt? They want to be worshipped now. Can you out-worship uh, 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 the internet right now? Can you out-attention the internet right now? You can't, they got dating apps, you know how many, dude, if you want to know, find a marginally looking woman, five photos of her, make your own dating app as a woman and see what response you get. You will be shocked at the amount of men that will throw themselves into worship at her feet. You'll be shocked, okay? I've done it and I was like, wow, okay? Now I see why she won't return my message, <laughs> okay? Same thing on Instagram, same thing with DMs. It's gonna be difficult. De-Evolution is the other book that I wrote, Feminism's Reverse Engineering of American Women. By design, 
they've done the Adam and Eve live in front of you. And she bit. How do we overcome that? Okay. This is my podcast. It is free. SoundCloud, Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. That's all free. Okay. That's my website right there, gregadams1.com. Then you can get to everything. So people are like, how do I find you? Either YouTube or the website will direct you to everything else. Okay. This is a course that I did here because a lot of people in talking to about relationships, they believe that I'm saying be scared of women. I'm saying be more selective. And where should your focus be in life? Men focus too much on women. Everything you do revolves around women. Except for the 21 convention. You probably were thinking, where the hoes gonna be at? <laughs> Even coming to a men's convention, you were like, I wonder if there's gonna be some. At the 22, maybe I can go over there. <laughs> I know it. You want to go to the gym. You thinking about all them girls running around with the booty shorts. You doing your bench press, she come by. She knows you watch. Okay. You waiting out there trying to get a date. So I try to get men to remember why we're here. Yes, women are fine. I love women. I love the pleasures of them. But it ain't going to be my all day, every day thing. There's a whole bunch of things that I can accomplish in this life. And men right now are stagnant because there's too many women to worship. All right, I always, I told the last group yesterday, I said, let's play a game. Let's go through your Instagram. I'll pull my Instagram up. Let's roll through five minutes. Let's see how much ass is on your Instagram and how much is on mine. And I can tell you who's worshiping women the most. You guys following all these thoughts on Instagram and you wondering why you're distracted, okay? In Conquer, we teach you everything that you should be thinking about other than that. And then when you get to the women, there's a section on there. I'm teaching you how to understand their lingo. I've been around women for 16 years, from age 16 to 22. Every day, I've been hearing them. They learn how to manipulate me. I learn how to manipulate them. I had the position of authority. Therefore, I often was the winner, right? So I understood what they were trying to do with me and what they mean when they say certain things. Specifically, when I hear men say this, I go, oh. They say, I feel, that's what they start their sentence off with. You feel? I feel that. That right there is a red, dead old flag, all right? No men should be saying, I feel. You should say, I know, I think, I believe, I understand. See, that's evidence. You're about to hit them with evidence. A lot of people that counter me with the stuff that I produce, I feel like you're saying that. So are you saying, no, you, no, you're putting words in my mouth. You're leading with feelings, and I can't counteract feelings when I present it hours worth of logic and evidence and proof and background. You see what I mean? I feel requires no evidence. It only requires the feeling. That is a female characteristic, a female trait, and they will use that against you. Well, I feel like, okay, let's get past your feelings now. What evidence do you need? What evidence do you have that something exists? Okay, so there's a code there for this coaching program, 21 convention, or it says 21 con, 50% off what I call conquer. You can go to, um, if you go to my website, gregadams1.com, It'll be there. And thank you very much, gentlemen. I hope this was enough information for you to think. Maybe you can take 10% of what I said and apply it to you. Maybe 2%, maybe 50, 100, doesn't matter. But if you have any questions, there's a microphone there. If not, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> have you got a question here? Yes, sir. First off, I want to say thank you. Thank you for saying it real. Thank you for sharing some of your story on, on what, what we need to be prepared to do to fight to be fathers. Definitely. So say I had a kid today or tomorrow, right? Just, you know, Thanos snap into thin air. Yeah. What do you see as some of the upcoming trends 10, 15 years down the line when that kid is a teenager, mm -hmm. right? Because you talk about smartphones today, time now. But right. in the future, what do you see as potentially complicating that issue even further? Good question, man. Thank you for that question. I really believe this trans issue is going to be prevalent in our society, okay? 
And this is because there was a recent court battle between two co-parents, two divorcing parents. One was a liberal professor. She's an educator. Other dad is an employee or a worker. Well, they had a son. On the days the mom had the son, she wanted the son to be a daughter. On the days the dad had the son, he wanted the son to be a boy. They went to court, duked it out, duked it out. He won initially. Then they, because what happens is when you go to court, there's a hearing, the judge makes a preliminary judgment, but then you go in and fight at the trial. So once they got the preliminary results, the judge was in favor of not having a, a procedure, hormones, to be injected in this boy to make him a girl, okay? When they went through the trial, the mother won. So the kid is going to be chemically altered, and I believe the kid is no longer older than 11, going to be chemically altered to a girl. Now they're pushing this, guys. They're pushing it. And now some of the people that you've seen, there was a clip here. I, I, I'm just guessing. Let me see if I could go back, okay? A, a photo that I showed you. They sneak this stuff in, okay? One of these girls looks suspect to me. Doesn't look like 100% female to me. Okay, could be wrong. However, they sneaking this stuff in, guys. And they're introducing this stuff to your kids. They're introducing this stuff to you when they're at school. They're teaching them how to play with the butthole, all right? And then over time, you're gonna see more of this. You don't see kids right now dressed as boys and girls or whatever, vice versa, but in the next 10 years, you're gonna see it with your eyes. And by the time you start seeing it with your eyes, you have to realize that fight's been going on 10 years ago, okay? It didn't just happen by the time you saw it. They've been fighting this battle already. Now, I'm not a sensitive person, so I'm not sensitive to the needs in regards of people's wanting to express themselves the way they need to be expressed. I just know how society balances out. Stuff is either natural or not, okay? We need, we need hierarchy, which is important, and we need order. Some of this stuff that they're opening up, they're allowing them to do everything. There's people that are black saying they're white now. There's people that are white growing dreadlocks and saying I'm a black woman. There's a woman running for vice president, says she was black, then she was Indian, then she was Asian because India's in Asia. What the hell are you, okay? See, this is what we're talking about. This is all chaos and disorder. And they introduce you to this stuff, your kids to this stuff every day. What makes sense no longer makes sense. So that's what I would see right now. Next 10 years, you got a kid, that trans issue is going to be big. And they're gonna come home, one day you're gonna see your kid come home. Remember you put your t-shirt on your head and act like you have female hair? All right, he gonna have a full wig on. What do you do now? What do you do now? All right, thank you guys, appreciate you. What he represents is patriarchy. We're here to do work as men, as patriarchs. There's nothing more natural than being a father.